Hi guys, today I'm gonna to be showing you how you can create a transparent background in either your photos or graphics using Photoshop 2020. And I'm gonna start right now. Right guys, so the first thing you want to do is go ahead and find a photo that you'd like to remove the background from. Now I'm going to show you how you can remove it from a graphic, so that's an illustration, and then I'm also going to show you how you can remove it from a photo. The idea is basically the same, but it's got slightly different ways of creating it. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and firstly open a graphic. Now. This photo here, you can see, is a photo of a lens that I've uh, created, an illustration, but I've gone ahead and opened it up in Photoshop instead of InDesign. And what's happened is I've got a white background, but what I want it to be is transparent. So how do I get a transparent background? Well, it's actually quite easy and we're only gonna be using one tool. So firstly, what we want to do is because we're working in layers, we want to make sure we've always got a layer to go back to. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna duplicate the layer that I'm working on. So I'm gonna go ahead and press Command J on our keyboard. Now what we want to do is go ahead and select the background. And there's multiple ways of selecting a white background, but I find the easiest way is using the magic wand tool. Now, if you want to go and find the magic wand tool, it is on the left-hand side on the tools panel, but it's under a sub menu sometimes. So if you go ahead and find either the object selection or the quick selection tool, you go and click and hold, you might find the magic wand tool appears in your sub menu. And that is the tool that we're going to be wanting to use today. Now the magic wand tool, it works very easily. What it does is it works by clicking a sample area and it selects all of the same color within that area. Now there is a way of changing that and that is called your tolerance, which is found in the top right hand corner. Now the tolerance is how much color variant is allowed when you select. So let's say you've got a tolerance of zero. Zero means you're only selecting one particular color and in this particular instance, it's white. But if you turn that tolerance up to let's say 50, what it will do, it will select white but it would also select all of the gray tones as well. So do bear that in mind that if you want to select a area which uh, changes in color ever so slightly, you just want to simply increase your tolerance. But if you're just simply cutting out a white background, what I would suggest is probably keeping the tolerance quite low as the background is gonna be probably quite consistent. So what we're gonna do is go ahead and make sure we've got our uh, magic wand selected and we're just gonna simply click. And what that will do is that will bring up our new selection that we've made. And if we go ahead and zoom in, you can see we've got the marching ants appearing, which means that we've got a selection activated at the moment. So all we're gonna need now is to simply create a transparent background is simply press the delete button. So we'll go ahead like so. But as you can see, nothing's changed. That's because we've still got the layer below activated. So what we're gonna do is gonna press Command D. What that will do is deselect that selection that we've just made. And we're gonna simply turn off our background layer. And as you can see, we have got our transparent icon appearing, which is these white and black squares. Now, when we go ahead and save it, if you go ahead and save it as a JPEG, you're going to lose the ability to keep a transparent layer. And that's because a transparent layer is actually found in a different channel. So most, uh, cut, uh, for instance, most photos follow red, green, and blue, and it's got three channels. But we want to have a fourth channel, and this particular channel is called an alpha channel. So you've got red, green, blue, and alpha. Now there's only a few formats, which is the type of file saving, that allow you to keep a, uh, uh, a alpha channel available. And that is a PSD, which is a Photoshop file, a TIFF, which is an uncompressed file, and then you've also got a PNG, which is probably the most common way of having a transparent background, because a, a PNG is the equivalent of a JPEG, but it allows you to have the alpha channel saved within its metadata, which is really important. So how do you create a PNG from Photoshop? Well, if you go ahead and go to save, or should we go file, and we go to save as, you'll notice in our file format, there isn't a PNG available. And that's because we've got to actually export it instead of saving it. So we're gonna go ahead and just simply press cancel on that. What we want to do is go up to file and we want to go to export. Now, as you can see, we've actually got quick export as PNG. But if you go ahead and export as, what it'll do is it'll open up an extra menu here. And this will allow you to save a custom file. But because I want to be nice and quick, what I'm gonna do is go to file. I'm gonna to go to export as 
PNG like so. And what it'll do is it'll open up a menu and this is where you can go ahead and save it. So I'm just gonna go ahead and save it like so. I'm gonna go ahead and press save. Now it's asking me to replace it because I've already got one on my desktop. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to minus this window. And then what I'm gonna do is go ahead to that PDF. And as you can see, I've got my P JPEG here and then I've got my PNG. And as you can see, it's showing that I haven't got a background selected. So that's how you cut an out in one when you're using a, a, maybe a rasterized um, illustration. But how do you do it when you're using a photo? Well, the premise still applies, but you'll need to try a little bit of a different technique to get the result that you're after. So what we're gonna do is instead of opening up that, we're gonna open up a photo. And now this photo is of a girl. And if you want to follow along with the same photo, the link will be in the description. So what we want to do is again, create a cutout of just the girl and completely remove the background. But unlike the previous photo, where the background was very consistent and pure white, this particular background changes in tones. And this is where you'll need to change the tolerance of that magic wand tool. So what we're gonna do is go ahead and make sure we go ahead and duplicate that layer first. That's the most important thing. So we're gonna go ahead and press Command J. So we have got a layer to go back to just in case we make a mistake. And then what we're going to do is go ahead and select our magic wand. Again, over on the left-hand side tools panel. Again, it might be under the menu of either quick selection or object selection. So you just make it a click and hold and it will appear. Now what we want to do is actually increase the tolerance because at the moment, the colors aren't going to be very consistent. So what we're going to do is I'm going to increase the tolerance to about 20. Now there's another button you'll need to change. What we want to do is on the left-hand side here, this is how selections are created. And what we want to do is change it from new selection and we want to change it to the one next to it. And this one's called add to selection. So that means every time you click on your uh, photo, it's going to add to the selection instead of replace the selection with a new selection. Because that means we can sample different parts of the photo and add it to a single selection, which is really important. So what we're gonna do is go ahead and start clicking on the layer. And as you can see, it's selected that area, but not the rest. So what we need to do is click an area where it hasn't selected. And then as you can see, it's selected a little bit more. So we're gonna go into the top corner here, select a little bit more, and then wait until you are completely happy with how it is selected. So once we've done that, what we'll need to do now is to create a select and mask layer. So we're gonna go ahead and create a select and mask just up here and we're gonna go ahead and click and a new file will open up. Now in the properties panel, you can see on the right hand side here, this is how we can create a selection. So at the moment, I have got the view of everything I'm going to be removing in green. But as you can see at the moment, we've got the girl selected. So all we're gonna to need to do is just simply invert that selection. And we can do this by pressing Shift Command I. And what that will do is that will invert the selection completely opposite. So anything you had cut out originally will be reversed. So that means at the moment, we've got the background going to be cut out. Now, because this girl has got quite wavy hair, we're going to have to refine the edge between the cutout and the girl. So what we're going to do is we're gonna go over to the left-hand side and we're gonna go ahead and select the refine edge brush tool like so. And then what you'll need to do is use it very similar to a paintbrush and just brush over the area that you would like Photoshop to look at again. So what we're gonna do is go ahead, click, hold, drag upwards. And what it will do is it will start re-looking at that area that you've selected and refine the edge for you. And this works really well on hair. So we're gonna go ahead all the way around, keep on going around, all the way, making sure you've got all of that area selected. We work our way round. Again, the longer time you spend on this particular process, the better the outcome will be. So I often spend a long time cutting out objects because that's the most obvious when it's done badly. It really is obvious to the viewer. So I'm gonna have a selection like so. Lovely, so that's all of the hair done. And it doesn't look like we've got any more hair. Now we've got a few other um, uh, sliders here. So all I do is with a feather, I like to add maybe a one pixel feather, but that's about it on this particular side. And then what we can do is output. So once you're completely happy with the cutout that you've made, so you've made the area green and it's completely transparent. Again, you can always change the color with our color slider at the top right. 
All you'll need to do is go to your output settings. Now there's multiple ways of outputting this. You can either output it to a selection, or if we go ahead and click on that dialog box, it will be done with a drop down menu. And the one that I would recommend using is layer mask, because a layer mask will allow you to keep the information while just hiding it behind a transparent layer instead of creating a new layer, because that will completely delete all those pixels. So once we've done that, all we'll need to do is go ahead and press OK. And as you can see, we have now got a layer mask selected on the layer that we were working on. But as you can see, again, the background doesn't look like it's been deleted. Well, that's what we need to do is now create a solid color layer so we can check the layer against a completely opposite color. And this is a good way of just rechecking your work to make sure that you are happy with the cutout you've done. So what we'll need to do is go ahead and make sure we've got our background selected, our very bottom layer. We're gonna go down to our adjustment layers icon and we're gonna go all the way up to the very top of the one, the one that's ticked, called Solid Color. And we'll go ahead and select Solid Color like so. Now, a Solid Color is a way of just adding in a completely blank layer with a particular hue to it. And you can change your hue on the side here, and you can also change your saturation and luminance. But I'm gonna just choose completely black, and I'm gonna go ahead and click OK. And as you can see, we can now check our cutout. We can actually zoom in. And we can see that Photoshop has done a really good job. We've got a little bit of pink fringing, but to be honest, for a very quick cutout, I was incredibly happy with that. And if you'd like to learn more about how to cut out more detailed objects, I've got quite a few videos on my channel that will help you out. But this is the basics on how to cut out using the magic wand tool and creating a PNG. Remember guys, if you wanna save it as a PNG, you need to make sure that you've got your checkered board here selected so you can actually see it in uh, with your view and then you want to go to file and then you want to go to export if you want to save it is either a tiff which again does have alpha channels available or a psd all you'll need to do is go ahead and press save as i would recommend having things saved as a psd because it will have all of the metadata saved and all of your changes such as layer masks all in the layers and it's a lot easier to navigate through your photos when you have all of your layers selected. Brilliant and there we go guys. Mm -hmm.